Hi everyone, this is Jason with a quick video on a new feature we've added to iTree Eco, and that's the ability to import plot data. So previously we had the ability to import complete inventory data, and now we've added this ability to import data into plot-based sample projects as well. So real quickly, this is my, my data here. You can see I've got uh, multiple tabs in my workbook here. The first one is stand data. So this is data from a natural forest, and we've got different stands delineated in there. So I'm gonna use these as my strata. And then the important thing when you're importing plot data is that you need to have a plot ID number that ties your plots to your tree data. So you have to have both plot and tree data, and you have to have that ID number that links the two. So here you can see my ID number uh, within my stands, and we've got a couple other fields here that we're going to import as well. And then when I jump over to my tree data, you can see I've got my same plot numbers here. We've got a whole bunch of plot ones. That's because these first 11 trees are on that plot one. So that's how you link those two when we go to import. It's important to make sure that the data you have for your plot data is a statistically valid random sample. Otherwise, you're gonna get incorrect results from ECO. Uh, you can see we do have some plots in here with zero trees on them. That's completely fine. If you have plots in your data where there were no trees on them, you, you wanna make sure that you import them as well. So let's jump over to our ECO project. I've already set this project up so it's ready to accept data. Um, the key things here are that you want to set up your data collection options. So I'm under here in the project configuration tab, project definition, data collection. You just want to set up these to accept the data you have. Data we have is real simple. We do have this percent measured, which is a required, or I'm sorry, we have this percent tree cover, which is a required variable in that import data. We don't have percent measured, but if we leave that and don't import it, it by default gets set to 100. So that's completely fine for our example here. Then we scroll down to our tree fields. We have species and DBH. Again, this was a timber inventory in a natural forest, so we don't have a lot of typical iTree eco variables. It's pretty simple, but I do want to keep track of our user tree IDs from that import data, so I've turned that field on as well. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to set up those stands as my project and strata area, so I've got my same stand numbers and the area of each one of those uh, strata as well. So it's really important that you get those strata areas correct. Uh, otherwise, the data uh, and results you get from iTree Eco will not be accurate, especially when doing plot-based projects. So from there, we can jump over to the data tab. We're ready to import. You just want to click on what you're going to import. So I'm going to import my plots first, and I can click on the import button then. And now it's just our same data wizard we have when we were doing complete inventory. So I'll hit next here, and I just need to browse to the workbook where I have my plot data. And then it wants to know which sheet in that workbook I want to bring in, and it's already selected my plot data. And my first row contains column headers, and I'll go ahead and hit Next here. And now we just want to select which fields we're going to import. So I said we have stands. That's going to be our stratum, and we'll just call that the description. That's what those values are in there. And then really importantly, again, you have to get that plot ID in there. So that's our ID. Uh, we can use different plot sizes too. So by default, Eco uses uh, 0.1, a tenth of an acre, uh, but this timber inventory used bigger plots. It used a fifth of an acre, that 0.2. So we can import that information as well. So we've got our plot size in acres here. We'll import that. And finally, our percent tree data. I've cleaned this up, so this data should come in pretty simply, but you can always look at that video we have for complete inventory data which I'll link to in the comments section of this video and is also available on our video learning page if you need more details about uh, how to import your data. So here you can see it's going to tell me exactly how many of our records came in. Uh, looks like all of the records in my data, all our plots are going to come in. We have uh, none of those plots were rejected, so all that data is going to come in. So I can hit finish here. And really quickly, all our plots are going to populate here, but there's no tree data in any of these plots. You can see we've got no trees down here. So now we need to import our tree data. Click on the tree button up here. This is going to tell us which data we're importing. So if I was wanted to import more plots, I'd have to go back to my plot button and then click import. But we're going to do our tree data now. So we'll click on trees and then import. Go ahead and hit next. And now we're just going to select that same workbook, but this time we want to make sure we grab the trees worksheet in there. Again, our first row contains our column headers. And again, now we're just going to match things up. 
we got to make sure we get that plot ID field. Uh, so that's our plot field. Now that we're looking at our trees, uh, I said I wanted to do user tree IDs. So rather than uh, using Eco's tree IDs, we'll call our tree numbers, our user tree ID. We have our species, common names. Always good to map those species names uh, one way or another just to make sure that everything's coming in correctly. Uh, this is going to be, again, a common name. And finally, we have DBH, and that's all our required variables. Um, we'll skip everything else for now, so we'll go ahead and hit Next. And it's just going to go through and check all that data. Since I selected to map my species, we, it's going to check to make sure that all the matches between our value and eco are correct. Again, check out that video for complete inventory if you have more questions about that matching process. Um, but everything came in, so that looks good. So I'll go ahead and hit Next. And again, it's going to give us that report of how many fields it was able to import and if there were any rejected. In our case, there's none rejected, but if there were, we could check, check that rejected tab for the reason why. So we'll go ahead and hit finish here. And now, hopefully, all my tree data will come in and we'll have tree data populated underneath each one of those plots uh, that we had previously. So yeah, my tree table is now full. If I go back to my plots, you can see plot one now has those 11 trees uh, underneath it that were in our data. It's going to be the same for all the other plots. And now we're ready, if we want to, to submit this data for processing. So that's how plot data import works. Uh, thanks for your time. And do check out that other import video on the complete tree inventory for more detailed explanation of how to deal with mismatched data and making sure your uh, projects are ready to go to accept that data for import.